Hello everyone! Many Ace Rolla viewers ask the question, what the hell is that guy even talking about? Vertex shader this, fragment shader that, math from all disciplines, and complex algorithmic solutions that come together to produce beautiful art with endless possibilities that's all under your absolute control. So today, my birthday, I'll finally be answering the question. What is graphics programming? Graphics programming is a specialization of computer science in which advanced math meets advanced computer science meets art. This is what makes it so difficult. It requires expertise in two academically gatekept disciplines, as well as a skill that nerds stereotypically don't have. Because of these high requirements, graphics programming is often left for grad school onwards, as an undergrad degree would be spent on building those foundational math and CS skills required for graphics. The math ranges from simple linear algebra algebra to multidimensional calculus and applied differential equations, the computer science is difficult because parallel algorithms are often far more complicated than their sequential counterparts, and you have to learn how to program a device that functions very differently from the CPU. Graphics programming also struggles to be taught in an undergraduate setting because the field changes so often that school curriculums can't really keep up. It's also so niche and specialized that asking a college professor to make a relevant graphics class is like asking the high school English teacher to make a programming class. This high barrier of entry, an ever-changing landscape, an ocean of beginner resources that quickly become outdated, and a major lack of professionals that are able to produce intermediate resources to help learners bridge the gap from novice to expert, gives way to a field that effectively gatekeeps itself. So how does anyone ever get their foot in the door? How did I become a graphics programmer? Do you need to go to school to do any of this? How much math do you really need to know? And is it even worth it? All of this will be answered and more, but first, something a little different. This video has been sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons from basic to advanced, so if you're just getting started learning math or are brushing up on your linear algebra for graphics programming, Brilliant has something for you. Even if you don't know where to start, that's no problem. Brilliant customizes its content to fit what you need. Just take a quick quiz when you sign up, and Brilliant will match you with lessons that fit your interests and level of expertise. When it comes to self-teaching and initial research, Brilliant is a wonderful option for getting introduced to complicated topics that you'd otherwise have to spend hours perusing the web for, or even hundreds of dollars on a related math class at college. I personally use Brilliant for a quick refresher on math concepts I haven't worked with in a long time. Be sure to try out everything Brilliant has to offer with a free 30-day trial and 20% off an annual plan when you visit brilliant.org forward slash acerola or click the link in the description. Thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Let's start with something pretty important. Am I even qualified to be telling you any of this? My videos are intentionally low production value and amateurish in nature to be a bit more relatable to the average viewer, which unfortunately results in most people assuming I'm not a professional. So let's start by answering the question. How did I become a graphics programmer? The year was 2012. I was in eighth grade. I was quite sickly as a child, and middle school was no exception. I had a mysterious illness that no doctor could diagnose, and so I stayed home often, binging anime and playing games. I was in love with Detective Conan, and I had aspirations of becoming a detective myself, but ultimately, I didn't have much drive or interest in school at all. My grades were poor, and I never did homework. I was really looking forward to high school, since I always had older friends, and they had all graduated from middle school two years ahead of me. The end of the year was approaching, and my friends in high school informed me of this wonderful new early college program they were all taking part in. The concept was simple. You enrolled in community college, took college classes like any normal college student, and the program would convert college credits into high school credits. By the time you finished your two-year degree, you would also have a high school diploma. This essentially completely skipped high school, as all of your time was spent on the college campus. Since my best friends were doing it, if I wanted to go to school with them, I would also have to skip high school, otherwise otherwise they'd end up six years ahead of me, and I'd never catch up. They would be finishing university by the time I graduated high school. So, I begged my parents to let me skip high school entirely, to which they were reasonably skeptical of and ultimately told me, no, I had to do one year of high school first. During that one-year filler arc, I took an architecture class and really enjoyed drafting and considered it as a life path. I became the only person in the high school that knew how to use the laser engraver to engrave AutoCAD designs, and I also discovered my love for chemistry 
and ultimately decided that I wanted to become a chemical engineer. After all, I certainly do not have the physique to become a hardened murder detective. The summer of 2014 came around, and I enrolled in Central Oregon Community College at 14 years old, majoring in chemistry. I was so young that I had to ask the professors for explicit permission to let me take their classes. My friends were still very ahead of me, and I, a reasonable human being, wanted to graduate at the same time as them, so I took on three times the course load for a majority of my terms in order to graduate along with them by adding extra electives that would cover more diploma credits. Two years passed, and I obtained my high school diploma and my associate's degree in chemistry. This sounds impressive, but in reality, I wasn't that driven of a person. Sure, I had taken a lot of extra coursework to graduate with my friends, but that's because I wanted to catch up. I ultimately just went with the flow of whatever my friends were doing, and unfortunately, once we graduated, we all dispersed and went our separate ways. Coincidentally, a new university had appeared in my town, OSU Cascades. Its campus had just finished construction. While my friends spread across the country for university, I complacently stayed in the same place and enrolled at OSU Cascades. But there was one major problem. They didn't offer a chemistry program yet. So I did what every uninspired male teenager does and enrolled in their computer science program. I've always been competent with a computer and I did have at least mild interest in the topic. But very unfortunately, I had to do two years of CS prereqs. And so the two years I gained from early college were rendered pointless. Fall 2017 is when I took my first computer science class. My professor was having us learn the fundamentals of programming with P5JS, the JavaScript version of processing. I remember quite clearly when my professor demonstrated to us how to draw a circle on the screen, because from that moment forward, my entire life and worldview changed significantly. I've always been creatively inclined. I've drawn and painted and sculpted. I was an accomplished band kid, and I also did theater, but I'm also very analytical and good at problem solving. So seeing this circle on the screen was like seeing everything I was ever interested in or good at combined at once, especially when my professor asked us how we could simulate physics to get a bouncy ball. I was seeing math applied creatively for the first time in my life. I went home and spent all of my time seeing what cool art I could make with P5JS with what little math and programming skills I had. It turned out I got insanely lucky pivoting to computer science on a whim because its creative problem solving nature was perfect for me. For the first time ever, I was motivated to do my best in school. Coincidentally, I also fell in love with calculus at the same time. It was like when math finally made sense to me and became extremely interesting, so I became motivated to take every math class as electives in order to learn as much math as I could for fun. Unfortunately, over time, the computer science assignments became less and less interesting. It went from cool creative projects to boring, lame web development assignments, and I could not stand web development. I realized that I was effectively on the path to become a web developer, and the fun times of P5JS and creative coding were over. I was extremely resentful and upset during these school terms. I lacked the knowledge and perspective to find a proper path that contained what I loved about programming. I had no idea what graphics programming was, and I felt doomed to a life of misery in web dev. It was around spring 2019 when I was messing around with Unity tutorials, specifically Jasper's at catlikecoding.com. I had followed most of his tutorials for fun until I inevitably landed on his rendering series. I did a few of the tutorials, I learned what a normal map is, then sort of got busy with school and forgot about it. A few months later, E3 was happening, and I was watching it live with my best friend. The Death Stranding reveal trailer came on, and I was absolutely blown away by the visuals. The terrain was beautiful and otherworldly. I knew for certain that I wanted to do whatever it is that could create those visuals, but I still didn't know exactly what that was. Regardless, I set my sights on game development, but there was one major issue. My university was so small that there wasn't any kinds of classes about game development development, and especially not graphics. I became even more frustrated because all I knew how to do was learn in a classroom setting. The thought of learning it myself seemed impossible. Fall rolled around, and it was time for the big bad algorithms class that every computer science student has to take. Our final project required us to choose an algorithm and do a presentation on it. Around this time, I discovered our goat, Sebastian Leg. I saw his video on marching cubes, and it looked like so much fun I chose it for my presentation. I spent an entire weekend implementing the world's worst marching cube script in Unity which became my first graphics project ever. Our program had required assignments each term to ensure we were taking the proper steps to develop ourselves professionally. One of these assignments involved looking at job listings we wanted and comparing our skills to the required skills. It was at this time that I finally realized graphics programmer was even a thing, and just how far away I was from ever achieving the goal of becoming one. I remember submitting one of those assignments and discussing how frustrated I was that I felt doomed to this life of web development, that I didn't have the proper support to do what I wanted to do at the school and that it felt so 
so hopeless. My professor responded by telling me to stop being such a bitch in the nicest way possible. He provided me with a book that detailed a test-driven approach to developing a ray tracing engine and encouraged me to teach myself graphics. He also got me in touch with one of the lead graphics programmers at Intel who was willing to mentor me a little bit and gave me some direction, but honestly, I did not use that resource nearly as much as I should have. Regardless, I was a piece of shit and ended up playing WoW Classic and also COVID happened and I put 2,000 hours into Final Fantasy XIV to cope with the experience. Fall 2020 came around and I realized that if I wanted to have the life I wanted, I would have to start putting in the work and make the necessary sacrifices. I quit Final Fantasy and began trying as hard as I could to learn graphics programming while going to school full time and working to pay for school. I started with redoing all of Jasper's rendering tutorials and then I created a simple DX11 app that rendered a terrain hype map by following the roster tech DX tutorials. I really didn't like the graphics API end of things as much though, so I ended up focusing pretty much exclusively on writing shaders afterwards. December 2020 came around and the long-awaited Cyberpunk 2077 finally released. I took a bit of a break to play through it and came out with some newfound motivation. I have always loved video game photography. To me, video games are the highest form of art, and I love taking pictures of beautiful graphics and set pieces. Cyberpunk's photo mode sucks. It sucks so much that I thought, fine, I'll make my own photo mode in Unity. I soon learned just how much math can be used to modify and manipulate color data to your whims, whether that's brightness, exposure, saturation, contrast, sharpness, color blending, whatever, it's all just simple math. I feel like I finally got a foot in the door of graphics, as the math of post-processing isn't too hard to understand, but the combinations are endlessly entertaining. It was spring 2021 now, and unfortunately, things were coming to a head. I was supposed to graduate but I still barely knew anything. I had been rejected from tons of graphics internships at this point. I knew I was not good enough to get a job anytime soon, certainly not by the time I graduated. There's a strange phenomena in which internships are heavily gatekept by academia. Most internships are only available to students as a requirement for applying. To me, graduating seemed like a death sentence. Without an internship to give me relevant work experience and more formal graphics knowledge, how could I ever hope to get a real job in the industry? So, I devised a plan, my own golden path a maneuver I named the Internship Gambit. The plan was simple. I would completely neglect my schooling in the spring and focus 100% on self-teaching graphics. I would fail all of my classes, maintaining my status as a student so I could continue applying to internships for the next academic year. During the wait until next spring so I could take the classes again and graduate, I would continue spending 100% of my time on graphics. And so, I went from getting my diploma and associates two years early to super senioring my bachelors in order to pursue my dream of graphics. I created a little Unity terrain generator, and in June 2021, decided to apply everything I had learned so far by writing my own Minecraft shaders. While I was writing the shaders, I realized the critical lack of edutaining graphics videos on YouTube. I had suffered greatly at this point trying to learn the basics and beyond of graphics. I wondered if maybe I could make it a little easier for those that come after me, while also informing the casual viewers just how much work goes into the pixels on their screen. In August 2021, my first video was released Released to great reception, and I enjoyed the creative process so much that I decided to continue making videos on each of my projects to keep me motivated as well as give slight breaks between self-studying. A few months later, in November, I landed an interview for a graphics intern position at Intel, working on their GPU profiler, which I got the offer for and started a few months later in February. I wanted to work in games though, so I kept grinding self-study beyond the internship experience. In June of 2022, I graduated with my bachelor's and received a full-time offer from Intel. I also received a response from my application to the local Sony game studio, interviewed, and received an offer for an associate graphics programming position. Ultimately, it was my extensive portfolio and long list of videos demonstrating my understanding and competency of the subject that landed me the job. After years of sacrificing all my free time to self-study graphics, it finally paid off. Two weeks after accepting the Sony offer, my grass series started getting some views. And well, we all know what happened next. Regardless, I was finally a real graphics programmer. But despite saying my employment status in multiple videos, people still don't see me as a professional and treat me as if I don't know what I'm talking about. I wonder how I could solve this problem. Hello everyone, my name is professional AAA industry game developer Ola. I do the graphics programming for Ace Rolla Studios. And I'm here today to talk about what graphics programmers actually do, since many people seem to be confused about this. Uh, 
Next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to start off with a video put together by my colleague. You can play the video now. Like web development, you could say that graphics programming is conceptually split between a front end and back end. The front end being shader authoring or code that is executed on the GPU, and the back end being the graphics engine work where you write code with a graphics API to manage the GPU. Because as we all know, the GPU only does things the CPU tells it to do. If you work in an engine like Unreal or Unity, then the graphics engine part is pretty much all done for you, and all that's left is to write the shaders, which is what I do for my videos. Also, to clarify what a shader actually is, it's just a program that executes on the GPU. It isn't explicitly related to the artistic concept of shading. I have the privilege of focusing entirely on shaders for my video content because it's what I enjoy. But in the real world, graphics programmers have a bit more responsibility. Unfortunately, at most studios, writing engine code is going to be the main task of graphics programmers, whether that is building on a proprietary engine, working inside Unreal's source code, or extending Unity's scriptable render pipeline lines to satisfy the needs of the artists and invent the technology that needs to be there for the game to work visually. Shader authoring has largely been offloaded to the artists at studios. Tools like Shader Graph have majorly streamlined the shader process, making it more directly accessible to the artists and giving graphics programmers more time to work on the graphics engine. This ultimately means that graphics programmers don't do as much shader authoring today as they used to. What shaders we do write are the ones that Shader Graph cannot do, which is unfortunately the really, really complicated stuff such as ray tracing and global illumination techniques, advanced parallel algorithms implemented with compute shaders, complex GPU simulations, and of course, my favorite topic, advanced post-processing. The good news is that if you want to work with shaders, but don't want to do all of this crazy computer science stuff too, there are more roles at studios that involve shaders now that you can look at, such as technical artists. Personally, I would consider all graphics programmers to be technical artists, but I would not consider all technical artists to be graphics programmers. So what's the difference? It's a very blurred line between technical art and graphics programming, so I want to clarify that nothing I say here is absolute, and there will be exceptions everywhere. I am trying to speak generally to give a sense of direction and clarity. Ultimately, all that matters is the skills asked for on the job offer. While a graphics programmer and a technical artist both make shaders, the latter in a studio position usually is not writing shader code. Instead, they are using shader graph. Technical artists also do a lot of higher level tooling work, such as authoring plugins for modeling software like Maya or Blender to help artists streamline the creative process. This is the main difference. Graphics programmers are usually the ones working with the graphics API to make the rendering engines so that art is possible, and technical artists are the ones working with the engines at a higher level to make the lives of artists easier. They are still programmers, but it's different from writing graphics engine code. Technical artists usually are not going to be making those incredibly complex shader effects I listed earlier either, since that stuff is not possible in Shader Graph. I feel like it would be patronizing and disrespectful to say that technical art is easier than graphics programming. Every problem is different, and some tech art problems will be immensely more complex than some graphics programming problems. It is simply a different set of responsibilities that generally contains less advanced computer science and math skills, but requires more competence with existing tools. Lastly, if programming does not interest you at all, but you still want to work with shaders, then there are also material, surfacing, or VFX artists at studios. These artists work in Substance Designer and other similar programs to create particle effects, textures, and general materials used in the game, but they aren't writing any code to make their lives easier. They ask the tech artists and graphics programmers to do that. These are the three example paths I am laying out for you that require differing levels of computer science, math, and art skills, but all work with shaders in some way. I would be lying to you if I said these three positions are treated equally though. Unfortunately, graphics programming is the only position here that is seen as valuable by the industry. Technical artists, even though they usually do lots of programming and require a lot of esoteric knowledge, are often considered artists and not engineers. And as we all know, artists are treated very, very poorly by the corporations. Artists at game studios are usually hired as contractors and thus are not given the same benefits as engineers that are hired on as full-time employees. This can mean that depending on the studio, you may not get benefits or paid holidays like the graphics programmer will. This is obviously very unfair, and we should all advocate for more workers' rights for artists, but it is something to keep in mind when you consider your path. Graphics programmers have far less competition, and are far more in demand. It is probably one of the only jobs in game development that has decent security, because replacing you is really hard. We're getting ahead of ourselves though. If you wanted to become a graphics programmer, 
how would you do it? As I said at the beginning of the video, graphics programming is effectively a specialization of computer science and is often delegated to grad school. If you're playing an RPG, you don't start out as a cool weaponsmith, you first learn the fundamentals of blacksmithing and then become a specialist. What I'm saying is, is that graphics programmer is not the starting line, but the finish line, and unfortunately, everyone's starting line is going to be very different. My target audience is mainly college students, and since I myself am a recent graduate, a lot of my advice is going to be for them. But if you're in high school wondering what you want to do, let me start there. Graphics programming requires strong math and computer science skills. These are very, very academic subjects, and I would strongly recommend going to college for computer science and maybe minoring in math or taking math as electives like I did. I recommend school because the reality is that it's insanely difficult to self-teach programming and math from nothing. The structure and guidance of school is very valuable for these subjects, and a computer science degree is useful even if you decide in the end that graphics programming wasn't for you. Maybe some other area of computer science is, such as robotics, machine learning, or web development. This is the exact reason I do not recommend going to a game development school, because those programs are not going to really teach you graphics, and if you decide in the end that you don't like game development, you're screwed, because all of your credentials are for specifically game dev. A computer science degree will keep your options open. It's important to know that a lot of my colleagues I've met in the game dev industry do not have degrees, and they got in purely by just having a good portfolio of projects they learned to make themselves. It's not impossible to teach yourself how to do all of this. It is certainly an option to become a general game developer first, get a job at a studio, and then be mentored in graphics by your colleagues. Now let's imagine you are currently a computer science student and would like to get into graphics. I will be very honest, taking a computer graphics course offered isn't going to seal the deal. You're going to have to do a lot of work on your own time, just like I did, in order to gain the proper skills that the industry wants. The university graphics course might get you started with OpenGL, but OpenGL isn't really that valuable anymore, especially not as a portfolio piece. Supplementing your university classes with outside graphics resources on your own time is what I recommend doing. Unless, of course, you're interested in grad school. In which case, feel free to take your time and enjoy your undergrad. This isn't a race, after all. You can take as long as you want to get anywhere, as long as you get there eventually. But for the people like me who wanted to get there as fast as possible, which resources do I recommend for getting started with graphics? Let's start with the age-old engine debate. Which engine is best to start with? If you want to be a graphics programmer, I don't really recommend Unreal, because Unreal is all about using their tools rather than making your own tools. If you want to be a technical artist or a general material artist, I only recommend Unreal, because it is a complete package of pretty much every everything you'd need, and it's what most of the industry uses and wants you to know how to use. I also don't really recommend Godot for beginners either. It is a very, very young engine, it is heavily lacking in the graphics department, and it is especially lacking in the learning resources department. There just isn't that much out there for beginners compared to the other engines, and in my opinion, Godot tutorials suffer from the blind leading the blind phenomenon the most, even compared to Unity, since most professionals just aren't using Godot currently. But that's changing, and in a few years, this statement will most likely not be true anymore. This is why I recommend Unity to get started with, specifically the built-in pipeline, not URP or HDRP, as those are meant to be used like Unreal, and they fail pretty miserably at it. While Unity might not be the best company around, their engine is, in my opinion, the best starting place for beginners. Their graphics API is incredibly straightforward and easy to use. Dispatching shaders is as easy as calling graphics.blit or computeshader.dispatch, whereas in Godot, it is much more convoluted and annoying. The other reason I recommend and Unity is because the GOAT Jasper Flick exists, and his long list of tutorials for Unity are the absolute best resource on the internet, from learning the basics of game physics to his entire rendering tutorial series that taught me pretty much everything I needed to go off and become me. I'm not saying you have to use Unity forever, but I strongly recommend learning the fundamentals in Unity before transitioning to Godot or trying to write your own graphics engine. If you have some kind of moral holdup over this because of the Unity drama a few months back, you aren't giving Unity any money by learning stuff with their engine. In fact, it's kind of like you're stealing from them. After you've ran through Jasper's rendering series, I would recommend dipping your toes into graphics API work with the RosterTech DirectX 11 tutorials. Having graphics API work on your portfolio is incredibly important, if not necessary. This is of course already a mountain of work, and you shouldn't feel bad if it takes you months to do these things. It took me around two years to fully get over myself and commit to self-learning with Jasper's tutorials and the RosterTech resources. But let's imagine 
a world where you have finished these things. You've absorbed the basics of shaders. You've learned the rendering pipeline and how a mesh turns into pixels on the screen, how a CPU interfaces with the GPU, and how a GPU works to begin with. What do you do then? Unfortunately, this is where the true terror and frustration of graphics programming shows itself. The complete lack of intermediate resources. Very few articles and videos exist to bridge the gap from beginner to expert. In fact, this is one of the main reasons I started making my videos. The reality is that you will have to go from these simple Unity tutorials to reading research papers. Research papers can be intimidating, but learning to read and understand them is a necessary skill, perhaps the most valuable skill of all. You might think people who who can read research papers like myself are really smart or something, but no, everyone I know, including myself, has to read research papers many times over to try and understand them. All the research papers I link in the descriptions of my videos, I have read probably over a hundred times. It's going to be frustrating, it's going to make you feel stupid sometimes, but all you have to do is just read it again. If you don't understand a word, Google it and write down what it means and then read the paper again. Then you should go to sleep, wake up the next day hopefully, and read the paper again. Eventually, it'll all make sense. But there is one resource I absolutely wish I was aware of when I was trying to bridge this canyon, something I have been reading through myself this past year to fill in the gaps of my knowledge. The Holy Grail, Real-Time Rendering, 4th Edition. This book is four years old, so it's going to be outdated in some aspects, but in general, it contains a substantial amount of fundamental knowledge regarding real-time graphics programming, which I recommend everyone procures a copy of to at least skim the table of contents. I also have I heavily recommend the GPU Gems series of books. These are collections of articles written by industry professionals, and a lot of techniques discussed are still used today. Also, it's free. Lastly, aside from doing all this nerd shit like reading, there's one last thing that I recommend you do. Anyone can do the tutorials. Anyone can read the papers. Anyone can take notes on the books. But what really matters is if you can apply the knowledge. It's of the utmost importance that you play around with whatever it is that you've made. Try to break it. Try to make it look cooler. See what works and what doesn't. The more you experiment, the more you will learn. Then, after some amount of learning, you should always try to limit test and solve a problem you've thought of yourself. Most of my videos are an implementation of a related research paper that I present on, but my Minecraft video, Final Fantasy XIV video, pixel sorting video, and Counter-Strike 2 video are all personal limit tests of mine, trying to use my existing knowledge to create something I want or solve a problem. These are the portfolio pieces that stand out to employers, a demonstration of your knowledge and competence to apply it. It's important to know that, despite graphics programming being a subset of computer science, it is still an absolutely massive field with tons and tons of different problems problems that all have their own specialist knowledge attached to solving them. I specialize in post-processing, but you also have lighting and all of its sub-problems, particle systems, offline rendering, the entire field of physics, voxel rendering, and numerous other subsets of this subset. No one expects you to know it all, but to demonstrate that you could learn it all, if needed. On your journey, you will discover things you want to learn and create. Just like me playing Cyberpunk 2077 is what sparked my interest in post-processing. While I learned the basics, I came across papers papers describing the Kuahara filter and the difference of Gaussians, and there's still numerous other related papers I have yet to read and implement. But if you want an example beginner project, my last video on shell texturing is the perfect initial limit test for implementing and experimenting. To prove its effectiveness, I proposed a challenge to viewers in the last video, encouraging people, specifically beginners, to try and implement the technique. The Ace Rolla Furry Challenge ran for about 20 days and had around 150 submissions in total, most of which were first first-time shader programmers. Some of my favorite submissions include this one that is visualizing a mantle convection simulation, this one that is using noise to create an effect that kind of looks like solar flares, this one, shell texturing implemented on the PS1, the Wii, and the Dreamcast, proving its efficiency, and lastly, probably the most interesting use case, shell textured god rays that clip based on shadowing to create stylized atmospherics. Many people did exactly what I wanted, which was to apply concepts I have proposed throughout my other videos to improve the basic implementation, such as blindflung lighting and GPU instancing to try and optimize high shell counts, so I am glad people were able to apply what has been taught in other videos. The purpose of this challenge was to prove that A, the technique is accessible to beginners in terms of difficulty, and B, the technique has an immense amount of possible applications for you to discover and explore. I believe I have succeeded in demonstrating both the efficacy of shell texturing and its ease of implementation, so I certainly recommend it as a beginner project 
after learning the basics from the resources proposed earlier in the video. If shell texturing seems cringe and boring to you, then the other project I recommend is the Sum of Signs Fluid Simulation, proposed in another video of mine, but that one might be considerably more math intensive, depending on your experience. In the end, all I have to say is that graphics programming is hard. It requires a lot of knowledge to even get started, which I hate to say, but it's just the reality. Whether or not it's worth it is up to you, but for me, I could not be happier getting to spend my time telling you all about how much I love graphics. Through this practice, I have learned so much about the world around me, and whenever I go outside, I notice and appreciate so much more than I used to. As usual, a huge thank you to all of my current patrons. If you didn't know, all the patrons get to vote on the next video topic, as well as get access to some builds of my projects if you're too lazy to compile the code yourself. By the way, since we hit the goal for the shell texture challenge, I'll be eating a ghost pepper on stream right now. If you have any questions on the video, I might not be able to answer, but I'll do my best. Anyways, that's all from me. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Okay, are there, uh, are there any questions?